This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com. The Punisher, a firearm-wielding vigilante, was pulled from New York Comic Con by Marvel and Netflix, something Steve Harsh, who's been attending for years, understands. I do kind of agree with that, out of respect for the victims and for the situation. But another attendee, Leo Lawrence, says the Punisher didn't cause the Vegas shooting. That's only punishing the, the fans. And it's only letting the idiot that did it win. Punisher or not, security here is tight with the NYPD's heavily armed anti-terrorism unit standing guard. At the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan, I'm Julie Walker. Take that as a yes. What? The ring. The world remains in mourning after the death of Superman. Violence, acts of war, and terrorism are all on the rise. I had a dream. It was the end of the world. Invasion. I think it's something more. Something darker. We're asking people we don't know to risk their lives. Strong man as strong as alone. You ever heard that? That's not a saying. That's the opposite of what the saying is. Divided. We are not enough. The world needs Superman. why I brought you together. Ride ain't over yet. My man. No, that's your. Oh, sh- sorry. That's your signal. That means we have to go now. Yeah, that's that's what that means. It's so cool. You guys are listening to another episode of Redefining the Counterculture right here on Witten Radio. Today we are joined by special music guest Capital North. Guys, how's it going? How's it going, Ed? Really hey. good. Really good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Super excited to have you guys on tonight's show. Um, so we're talking about your 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 debut EP, um, as well as just how you guys became a band. And I know that um, you you guys were in a previous band, and you you just felt like this was a natural progression. Um, when did you guys, I guess, know for certain that um, you wanted to branch out and just do something new that really reflected your sound? Hmm. That's a good question. I think there's nothing I'm going to get it. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, lead, and then I'll, I'll follow. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, originally this project was going to be an extension of the old band, um, but we hadn't written anything in quite a long time, and we hadn't even played a show in like a year, no, two years. Three years? Two, two or three years. It, it had been a while. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little long time. And so, so we, we set out to write a new EP, 
and we realized halfway through it that this wasn't the same music. It wasn't the same member. It was John and I, but the other there was nobody else there that, from the previous band. And uh, and the vibe wasn't the same. And we're like, hey man, like this this is kind of a new band. This isn't really the same thing anymore. This isn't Life in the Sky, so we should probably not call it that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we kind of just started. Yeah, we just kind of started Capital North because of that. We, we figured it was time to change, to make a change and, and refresh. Yeah. Right on, right on. So, um, if I may ask, was it kind of like an amicable split? Uh, with the, the rest of the band, because I know that you guys were, you know, in a whole other group. Um, how did the other guys take it? Um, yeah, we don't talk about that. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, man, it was, uh, like Tony said, it, it was kind of like a long time coming, so it wasn't really like in a, a big, like, um, split or like, you know, a big argument or anything. I mean, we, we went through like plenty of, plenty of those over the years, but, um, it was more kind of like interchanging members over time, and Tony and I really were the only ones left in the band after a while. Um, so it was it was like fortunate. It was unfortunate that we were the only ones, the last men standing, but also, you know, unfortunate at the same time. So I mean, it was it was pretty simple for us because it was Tony and I, and we we both decided, hey, you know, we're pretty um pretty good at making music together. I think, and um, I think you know we have a good uh, mindset that that goes well together and we can go into something new without really having to um, have that awkward split with the rest of the band because it kind of already naturally happened. Um, so I think, I think it was, it was pretty, pretty easy. I mean, over the years, for sure, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble between members and, and a lot of people in and out of the band, but yeah, near the end, it was, it was pretty easy to change over to Capital North. Right on, right on. And I know um, that you guys had actually um, taken um, a trip. I, I believe it was over, it was in Europe. I'm I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Um you guys Oh that's okay. In, in terms of like your, your band name, um it was discovered after a trip that you both took. Tell us a little bit about the trip. Yeah, yeah so so actually, go yeah, go ahead, John. Uh actually it was just Jonathan that went on the trip. Um we, we kind of did uh, our own thing a little bit. Um I went to college and I graduated and I got an internship in, in Portland and, and Jonathan uh, was working at a job that he really didn't like that much. Um, you know, very few of us are fortunate enough to have a day job that, that we really are passionate about, you know, and as musicians, Absolutely. I think that, yeah, I think as musicians, it's even worse because you know what you, your body and your heart and your, and your mind tell you what you should be doing, but, you know, trying to make a living as a musician is, like, ridiculously hard. Um, <laughs> so John saved up, like, a bunch of money, and he just, like, Packed up a, a backpack, took his guitar, and went went on the road for like like, like eight months or something like that. Yeah, so I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give it to John because he he you know, he went. I didn't. So um, right. yeah, <laughs> <no point. laughs> you were there in spirit. You were there in spirit. Thanks, man. Uh, but yeah, no. Pretty much uh, after the split of Life in the Sky, we kind of were like, all right, let's take a little time and kind of reassess what we want to do and Tony was going to culinary school and he was you know he's a great chef so he was kind of getting to that and he ended up moving up to Portland um for a little while and, and living out of his car and, and working up there um for some pretty awesome chefs and I, I just yeah I think that's not not a bunch of money but enough to travel and I I went to New Jersey and stayed with my friend Mike and we ended up running a song together and that was kind of like the beginning of Capital North um but yeah, I ended up just buying a ticket randomly to Iceland. And like, all right, it's time to go somewhere new. <laughs> so, so I just showed up in Iceland at like seven in the morning. It was pitch black, winter time, and and uh, I ended up, you know, having a bunch of experiences. But the one that kind of uh, kickstarted Capital North for me was when I went to uh, the northern uh, capital of Iceland. They call it Akureyri, which uh, is also referred to as capital of the north. So that's kind of where the name came from. Um, and, uh, then, you know, Tony and I ended up regrouping after, uh, after travels and everything and decided it was time to, to, to get, get it going again. But, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely our, our time apart that kind of, um, initiated everything, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, I love the new EP and I had read somewhere that, um, uh, you were battling, uh, some physical ailments, uh, some illness. Uh, during the the making of this EP, um, now that the EP has been released, how do you how do you feel? What what is your I guess the emotion behind 
releasing the the EP, you know, and just dealing with um, the illness and, and having to overcome it. That's a good question. Thank you, man. I appreciate the compliment on the EP. Um, yeah, so actually the sickness for me and the, the ailment stemmed from my trip. Um, I ended up getting extremely sick when I, I traveled around Europe, and then I ended up in Morocco. Um, and I, <laughs> I, it's kind of funny now, but it, it, it definitely wasn't funny at the time. But um, I, ate, I ate some fish that made me very sick to the point of, like, hospital hospitalization, um, which in northern Africa is not – a uh, very good place to be. So um, I ended up being in the hospital and, and trying to, uh, you know, trying to make myself better, but really just kind of suffering for a few weeks there. And that ailment, it went away. Um, but what it ended up being was um, parasites. So when I got home from Morocco about a year later, I started to lose like a lot of uh, focus, mental focus, um, started becoming allergic to a lot of things and just overall like deterioration of my health. Um, so I think specifically uh, the song Broken Vessel on the EP really speaks to that time in my life a lot. Um, and it's, it's kind of based around uh, just transferring your consciousness, um, not to get too deep into too many lofty concepts, but I saw the movie Chappie by Neil Blomkamp, and it was pretty much talking about how we could live forever if we could just transfer our consciousness out of our ailing bodies, you know? Um, so during that the idea was kind of, you know, kind of, kind of came to birth. And, and I think during the album cycle, I was, I was still struggling a lot for sure. And, and it was a very tumultuous and very tough, uh, recording process. So that definitely didn't help a lot. Um, but at this point, I think I feel, uh, I know, I know I feel better. Um, still, still dealing with some health issues and that kind of stuff, but I definitely feel, uh, better in like a mental state. Um, now that the EP is out and everything is, Kind of uh, on the way, you know. If that makes sense. Absolutely, no. It makes it makes total sense. Um, I, I um, like that concept, and you know, it's something that um, I don't know. Like a lot of people don't really like to explore, but I mean, I think we can all agree that you know, death at some point for us is imminent, and so yeah. you know, just exploring you know ways that we can all live on is you know, something that is a universal thing that, you know, I think we all can can kind of relate to. So it's it's awesome. Absolutely, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's a very uh it's a very universal uh concept that we I feel like tend to kind of ignore or maybe just kind of sidestep a lot of times. So I think yeah. our, part of our goal for the E P was to try and like kind of put that at the forefront. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Now you guys explore some other things on the album as well, you know, like you know, relationships and so on and so forth. Um, where did the inspiration for the the other tracks on the EP come from? No, you yeah, want to so take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think that um, I think that the EP. Uh, the, so if you listen to the EP as a whole thing, uh, it's 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 loosely conceptual. It's not like a concept. We're not COVID in Cambria. Um, it's, it's, it's loosely conceptual. And the, the concept is like a life cycle, you know? It's not it's not necessarily like like child to, to elderly, but it's more like a, just like a, a complete cycle. So, um, you know, the inspiration from for all the songs really just was life, you know? Um, Broken Vessel was John dealing with some, some hard times and um, – with his health and, and wanting to, you know, sometimes, you know, you, everybody gets sick and I'm sure at some point everybody's been really sick and been wish, wishing like that you could just like, you know, like hopefully don't wish you that you can die or whatever. But a lot of times people get sick and they wish that they could like be healthy again or, or trade their life for someone else's that seems to be better off. And there's other themes throughout the, the EP, like, like relationships and family um, family is a big one and the struggles that come with, with, um, being a musician, you know, and, and uh, uh, expectations from people. And so really the inspiration for the album was living. Um, and, and we were blessed kind of in a way to have a couple of years to write it because all the songs are really just influenced by what we were feeling at the time. Uh, and a lot of the times, you know, a label or a band is like, well, it's time to write an EP or an album. We got to get this done in six months so we can record it. And and a lot of the concepts and themes of the album are um, are hypothetical, you know. So you think about like right. things like 
and I think that's probably why Dan's write about girls so much is because it's, it's love is one of the easiest things to relate to. But but yeah. reflecting on like the real things in life, like your family and like uh, uh, the world around you and how you feel in the moment um, is it, a little bit more difficult and it takes more time because you have to actually pull from things that are happening to you uh, at that time. So. So that that writing process for us taking a little bit longer was cool because we actually got to explore these other things that weren't just like hypothetical girl problems or or easy easy themes. You know, one day is great, a couple months are great, then you have some bad times, and then you have some great times, and then and then you know life is also like kind of very mundane a lot. And so that that's even explored is, is you know like there's not a lot going on right now, so let's write a song about it. You know, so it's really just we we drew a lot of inspiration from just living. Yeah, there's no, uh, there was no like grand crazy uh, event really that happened. It was just like as we were writing the songs, we're like, okay, where are we now? Let's talk about that, you know? Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I wanted to um, talk to you about the the album's title. What's the significance or the meaning behind it? Sea to sky. I um, was trying to, I guess, guess what it what it meant. Could you explain to me? <laughs> um, so, so the title originated actually. I was in Canada, um, taking a trip up there, and I was uh, driving on this highway called the uh, Sea to Sky Highway. Um, and we've been back and forth for a while about names and what we wanted to name. And we had a, we had a couple different names, but or a bunch of different names. But that kind of stuck with me because I started thinking Sea to Sky. Okay, that's kind of like birth to death, right? So it's like a whole. It's like a whole kind of. Um, uh, life cycle. So for us, it, it just simply means like sea is birth and sky is death. But um, I think it kind of ties in a lot of themes in the way that both the sea can be calm and also, you know, crazy and, and very dangerous and rough. And the sky can be the same way, right? So it can either be a beautiful death or a horrible death or anything, but there's everything in between. So sea to sky is, is really just a life cycle. That's kind of what it um, what it symbolizes, uh, I believe, in, in in my view. But I think like if you if you ask both of us, we'd have a different a different view of it. But that's my view. What, what would you say, Tony? Yeah. So for me, see the sky is, is an interesting concept because I I didn't I didn't get to uh, to go on that trip. Um, but uh, John told me about it like that night, and I was like, you need to come on more trips with me. I know. <laughs> we only ever we only ever travel to uh, coffee shops and tours, so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, uh, to be completely transparent, we almost actually named the band to this guy. Um, yep. Yep. And um, wow. and so we we, we kind of thought that that like was a little too close to life in the sky. We didn't really want to be be too close to that because we wanted to take a step away a bit. Um, but also for me, um, see this guy, it's, it's kind of like what John said. It's like, um, it's, it's, it's not really about the, the crazy stuff in the ocean or like the calm, ethereal feeling that you get like in an airplane, but it's really about like the journey, uh, between. It's kind of like a, like a, like a, a plane where anything could happen. And that's, that's kind of like the jam for me. But also, um, I think it's interesting as well that like the album is very, um, well reflected by the name because, you know, we have songs like Household Wars that are very, like, heavy and chaotic, um, and there's a breakdown, and it's really, like, in really low tuning, and um, and that's kind of representative of, of like, a really uh, bad storm in the ocean. But then there's also songs that are very ethereal and very, like, light and kind of, like, slow, um, and, th- and that kind of is more of a sky vibe. So, so I think it's representative in a, lot, in a lot of ways, actually, and we just felt like it was a really good fit for the album. I love it. Yeah, I mean, just it, – it, it's awesome. I, I love the meaning behind it and the fact that um, you both have, um, I guess, uh, like you both have different opinions or feelings on the, the title. To me, that's amazing. I love that. It just shows the the diversity but also how the, the two – Sides, but you know the two sides of you guys are coming together to make something so amazing. So I, I love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Now you guys had some amazing help on this album uh, in terms of producing it. Um, tell me, what was it like working with? Um, I think it's, it's Niles Jensen. I know I'm pronouncing it horribly. Uh, his name is horribly. Um, but uh, 
he's done work with uh, Sugar Rose and also Jamie Foxx. Um, what was it like working with him? Yes, it, yes, Nell, Nell Jensen, but you're very close, brother, very close. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was definitely something that we hadn't done before, which is, um, I guess the experience that we search for every time we record, or, or it's going to be the experience that we search for. Um, but I mean, to be honest, a lot of the, a lot of the EP was, or most of the EP, if not all of it, was self-produced by us. So I think, um, Going into it, we kind of initially wanted a producer and wanted to help there with production. And then once we got into the studio, we kind of realized, hey, we actually don't really need, like, a producer on this. We actually kind of just need someone for, like, maybe a few hints or a few tips here and there to help us out. But um, working with Nels was, was cool, man. I, I think um, he has a lot of experience in the industry. And... Um, I think he was able to kind of guide us through it uh, in, a, in a different way that we weren't used to. Um, and, of course, the studio is, is really fantastic, and it's, it's probably one of the nicest studios I've ever been in. So that was really nice. But, yeah, we spent, we spent a lot of time in that studio, man, just really kind of nailing stuff down, but at the same time trying not to overthink things. And I think that's where uh, it was nice to have Nels in there um, and his assistant, Devin, to, to be able to, you know, kind of, Reassure us, yeah, that that's fine, like that. You know, like don't don't overthink it. Um, you know, just just go with that. And I think together we made kind of a cohesive sound, and and it's cool to work with someone like that because you know they have the experience. And um, I mean, he's worked with Cigarettes, which is they're from Iceland, so by default one of my favorite bands. And Jamie yeah. Foxx, you know, <laughs> all around awesome. Awesome, but but yeah, it was, it was a good experience, man. And, and I think it's definitely something that was new for us and kind of got our feet wet into that territory. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, Nels was great. Um, uh, Nels was uh, very right away. He fit in with us really well because he was a total jerk. So um, <laughs> of the that's true. That's most, true. Yeah, totally. And, and it, it sounds hilarious, but honestly, most of the album was very lighthearted, but it was also a ton of banter and just talking crap to each other. Um, <laughs> and and the, the the real positive part about that is that, you know, John John puts it very nicely when he says, you know, like that's great, guys. Like like just don't don't overthink it. But really, it was probably more like, uh, that's good. We're moving on. And we're like, no, no, we got to do this. And he's like, no, no, you don't. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so, um, and, and, and we spent a, we spent a ton of time there. So he by no means was rushing us, but but Nell he, he knows what he's talking about, and so so it's not. Um, he's like, yeah, like we can uh, add layers and all these effects and stuff. He was like, no, man, that's that's what it is. That's what it's gonna be. It's good. You guys are you guys don't need to you don't need yep. to um, you don't need to overproduce this. It's already fine, you know. So yep. I wow. think um, like yeah, I think what John said was very true. Like. We did want to have a producer in the process originally, um, but but what we really needed was more like a coach and less like a writer, you know. So Nels was more like a coach. He was he would be like, "That's good. That's not good." He's a super honest guy, so we play something. He'd be like, "Sick," and he'd be like, "That sounds like crap. We're not using that." And um, so <laughs> okay. he, he was he, he was a, he was a good mentor, you know. He was a good mentor, and uh, and uh, he's, a, he's a great dude. So uh, it was a great experience for me. I remember, I remember when we first came into the studio to meet him, he, he heard like the demo track that we have, like just like the pre-production, and he was already like, yo, this is already produced. You guys don't really need me. Like, I'll just track it. <laughs> I'll just track wow. it for you guys, but you don't really need like my help because you guys already produced this pretty well. So that was cool. And then, I mean, to piggyback on top of that, it was, it was Chunk, the dude from Chunk who just really brought the whole EP to life, which, which um, was a whole, a whole different thing and, and really awesome to work with them. You know, Bert and Eric just, just killed it on mixing and mastering. So I don't have enough good things to say about them. Yeah, absolutely. So this is probably kind of a stupid question, but were there any parts uh, of the process of, you know, producing the album that were particularly hard for you guys or was did everything just kind of flow smoothly? Um. <laughs> I was not a stupid question at all, man. Yeah. I would say all of the parts, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say everything was really difficult. Everything was super difficult. Um, and and not not to be vague about it, but I, I really honestly feel like everything that could have gone wrong did. So um, from from finding mistakes after after tracking that we couldn't go back and fix and having to work with uh, Bert and Eric to fix them, 
Um, cause they're like the most amazing, uh, uh, what do you call them? I don't even know if you'd call them engineers. I guess they're engineers. The most amazing engineers. They can make anything. I just call them gods. Gods. Yeah, they really <laughs> saved us a lot. Um, so shout out, shout out to Chunk, no Captain Chunk. Um, yeah, they saved us a lot there. Yeah. And, um, you know, financially, this was a super, super ambitious on our part. Um, we really had no business, uh, spending as much time and money as we did with, with leading up to this release. Uh, but we did it anyways because we wanted to do it the right way. And that was a lot of delays and mastering took, uh, time and which it normally does. But we, we really, I want to, I want to make the positive and say we really pulled out all the stops, but I'll let you, let you touch on it, John, because it, it was, there was a lot of things that went wrong that we had to work, really work around and fix, I think. Yeah, it's, it's funny, man. I think I think Tony put it in a really good way, but I think yeah, everything that could have gone wrong absolutely did. Um, and in a way, I'm I'm almost like glad it did because it kind of I guess it kind of shows that we persevered and that we I mean at any point and there were definitely a few points where I told Tony like, look, man, like I'm done with this, dude. Like I, I don't think it's meant to happen. Like you know. It's too hard. It's too much of a struggle. We're losing money. We're, I'm losing faith in it. Like, I'm over it. I'm done. And, and we have to have those points, those low points, to be able to have high points after. Um, and I think that's what made ended up making the release like such such an awesome feeling, such a such a feat. Because if you know, if, if you don't do the work, then you really don't you don't really don't get that that feeling. It's like, hey, you want to skip school all week and then by the end of the week you, you feel like crap because you're like I skipped school all week I didn't do anything you know what I mean so to put in, <laughs> like, to put in, to put in the work like it just it sucks of course like there's a lot of stuff that we that we were struggling with and a lot of stuff that we didn't want to do necessarily and a lot of stuff that happened that was like wow I, I really can't believe that happened uh thanks a lot universe but it's just like you kind of have to push through that because I almost feel like it's a test you know and, and I think Tony has, like, something that he always says, which is, like, he believes that, you know, the most successful people are going to be the ones who are the last men standing. I'm paraphrasing, but he can say it in his own way. But I believe that, man. And I think that, like, if we persevere and if we work hard and if we endure all the, you know, the crazy stuff that happens and all the setbacks and everything, we push through it and just find a way around it or, or even just through it, you know, and, and to – reinvent ourselves which is pretty much what we did the entire two years we we spent making the album then by the end you're going to have that feeling of success even even if it's not like quote unquote successful you know what i mean right right your, your hard work and the the attention that you give in this project makes you love it you know regardless of how the world perceives it absolutely absolutely yeah you nailed it you nailed it love it that's awesome. To me, that's that's what true art is about. You know, it's it's fighting to get your story out or your 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 work out. You know, no matter what others think, if you're proud of it and you, if you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, you know, I mean, that's that's all that matters. You know, is that you put out something that you're proud of. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's funny. I just the other day, I don't know if you saw, but Ultimate Guitar released a, uh, an interview with Misha from Periphery, which is one of our favorite all-time bands, and he was pretty much talking about how they're, you know, with, with music, it's really easy for it to become business, and yeah. it's essentially, like, they just want it to be fun, you know, and he's like, we're going to play places we want to play and not play places we don't want to play. Um, of course, not being rude to fans, and, and <laughs> we're not going to play there, but it's like, you know, he he... he seems like he got lost in the business aspect for a long time. And I think that's what tends to happen. So for us, it's, it's very important, like you're saying, to make sure that we are happy first and foremost with it. And that, you know, it's, it's a success for us at, at the end of the day. And we're not just putting something out there, just to put it out there or just, you know, rid ourselves of it, you know? Absolutely. I completely agree. I completely agree. Uh, that kind of leads to my next question. What's the biggest takeaway that you want people to get from, the work that you've done, particularly on this album and just, you know, your albums to come. Uh, when people listen to your music for the first time, what do you want them to take away? How do you want them to feel? Good question. Um, for me, the biggest takeaway that I would I would hope that my fans, that sounds, I don't I don't want to work, using that word, that the people that listen to our music. Um, we love you, away. Tony. Yeah, it's me. 
Um, no, the, the the biggest thing that I that I hope people take away is that they're not alone in the world, and that that the crap that they go through on a daily basis, whether they're 16 and, and hormonal, or 35 and, and dealing with rough times, or or 60 or whatever age they are, that like somebody else is feeling it too, and and, um, and that I think because of music has been such a big part of my life, I've always found some kind of comfort in knowing that. Um, somebody can relate to me even if I, I don't know who that person is. Just knowing that, like, somebody has dealt with a similar issue um, um, makes me feel better, and it helps me do things. And so one of the ways that I, I really – John and I have very different writing styles as far as the lyrics go, uh, and we both work on lyrics a lot. Um, so it's not like – I feel like in a lot of bands, the singer writes all the lyrics, and it's definitely not the case in this band. We, we work collaboratively. Um, but, on everything. Uh, on everything. Yeah, on everything. Um, but, you know, I personally try to write, um, very direct lyrics. John's are more abstract. So you can, you can, if you listen to them music long enough, you can kind of pick out which lines John wrote and which ones I did. Um, You're but, okay. but I think the thing we have in common is that a lot of the time we write very vaguely. And the reason we write very vaguely is so that, um, it's really easy to kind of stick yourself in one of the situations that a song presents and say, Hey, that sounds kind of like what's going on in my life. So maybe these people are also experiencing it, and they they don't feel so alone. So for me, some kind of comfort and uh, community and um, unity uh, would be a great takeaway. If, if that was um, something that happened, I feel like that would be a success for me, no matter how well monetarily how big it is. Right on, right on. I like that. I like that. Um, so what do you guys have planned in terms of touring? I know that you know this album uh, being released this month has been you know, a, a huge journey for you guys, and, you know, it's it's definitely a big, 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 big step in the right direction uh, for things to come for you. Um, when can our listeners expect to see you out on the road? Thank you for your kind words, man. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we've been talking about it a lot, man, and trying to kind of figure out what our best, what our best uh, you know, route would be for – for uh, go, going out and playing shows on the road. And I think because Tony and I have a lot of experience touring in our old band, we're kind of trying to do it in a smart way. Um, and we do want to hit all the markets that are responding really well, which is which is really awesome to see, honestly, because it's, it's kind of everywhere. Um, and as much as we'd love to, like, you know, hop, hop across the pond and go to the U.K. And, and hit up, you know, Germany and everything, I think that'll have to wait. But I think in terms of um, the U.S. touring and, possibly even like Canada and maybe some parts of Mexico that's very feasible um, in the in this next year or the year after. But I think, uh, you know, more more close in the future, we'll, we'll be hitting the road probably this summer and, and um, have a lot of dates uh, within, the, uh, within the U.S. that we're going to try to line up and everything. And, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that those are uh, posted everywhere and everyone's updated on those. But, yeah, we're really excited, man, to just get out there and play and meet everyone and meet new people and, you know, just grow the family and everything, so. Absolutely, no doubt, no doubt. And where can our listening audience find out more about you guys, keep abreast of what what you're working on, and uh, look for uh, the updates on tours? So yeah, for so, all – go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, so basically, you know, we're, we're pretty much everywhere that anybody would think we would be. Uh, you can check out our Facebook. Um, we're on Instagram, uh, YouTube. Twitter, um, and all those are uh, at Capital North CA. Um, or you can just go to our website, and that's kind of a central hub, and that's just capitalnorthband.com. Right on, right on. Guys, I love this interview. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. I'm all out of questions, but I wanted to open the floor to you if there's anything else you'd like to say to our listening audience. Thank you so much, Walter. Appreciate that. Um, thank you. That we're so to meet all of you, man. We're we're really excited for all the support on this EP, and it's kind of unreal, man. We're we're really uh, we're really feeling a lot of uh, you know a lot of support from all around, and, and it's really uh, it's very overwhelming to us in a, in a really good way. And we're really stoked to meet everyone and just get out on the road and, and sing the songs with you guys. And and uh, yeah, we're we're stoked, man. So thank you so much for all the support. I'm just telling you guys, have anything else to say? Same. Same thing. Just excited to uh, finally be out there and playing again. And um, can't wait to, to get back on the road and go visit places that we haven't been in a long time and uh, maybe see some familiar faces and see a bunch of new ones, too.
Yeah, don't be scared. Don't be scared to like send us a message or hit us <laughs> up or anything. We're definitely we're definitely a band that will respond to you because we have nothing better to do. So it's <laughs> <laughs> all in our DMs. Hit us up. Say what's up. We're gonna respond, dude. You're not gonna tag us and get nothing back. So definitely hit us up. We're we're very friendly, I think at least, and uh, we love you all. So appreciate all the support, guys. And appreciate this interview, Walter. It's great. Man. Uh, I love it, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's no problem at all. I'm super excited. I mean, you guys are doing some great things. Your music is, is very relatable. And that's what I was going to say about what you just said, you know, being able to tweet you guys or to, to reach out to you guys through Instagram. I mean, you're, you're super, super relatable. And um, that's something that, like, a lot of musicians, they, they don't – they either don't have the – you know, the privilege to, to reach out with fans or they just yeah. get, you know, so wrapped up. And so the fact that you guys are there, and you know, people can interact with you and talk to you. It, it just makes your music so much better because people feel like they're, you know, you're real people behind the songs that they're listening to. And so I, I love it. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's definitely, that's definitely our goal, man, is to be real people and not just, you know, some dudes that, People put on a pedestal and feel like the huge disconnect between because we see that all too often and we want to be the ones to kind of change that, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love it, guys. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, you having us on. We really, we really had a good time. And uh, any other time you want to talk or need somebody uh, for the show, feel free to call us. Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to you guys coming to tennis at some point. I don't know when, but uh, whenever you guys get to- what part of Tennessee are you from? Uh, we, we're here in Memphis, um, but you okay. know Nashville's just two hours away too. So, I mean, okay. uh, I, grew up, I grew up in Tennessee for a long time. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't know it by my accent, but it, it used to be there. Wow. <laughs> small world. Small world. It, it comes <laughs> out sometimes after a few after a few bourbons. It comes out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll be I'll be in uh, I'll be in Nashville at the end of the month, dude. For uh, I'll be there for work actually. So if, if you're there and any time from the I think the 26th to the 30th, I'll be there. Let's link up, man. Absolutely, sounds like plan. All right, Walter. Thank you so much for this interview, brother. We really appreciate it. It's great. Oh, uh, it's no problem. Great talk to you as well. Thanks, guys. All right, thank, thank you, sir. You, you're welcome. That was our exclusive interview with the guys of. Um, Capital North, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're also available on uh, for iPhone. If you've got an iPhone uh, device or an Apple product, you can listen to us by downloading the Stitcher Smart Radio app. It's available for free in the iTunes store. Download the app and search for the show name. We're defining the counterculture. You'll hear the interview with these guys. Uh, we're also available for Android users. If you've got an Android phone of any type, um, just go to the Google Play store. Search Google Play Music. Search for our show name and uh, just download the app. Uh, we're also available for Roku users. If you've got a Roku player or a Roku smart television, you can watch us right in the privacy of your own home. Uh, from the Roku channel store, just search for our show name. It's Redefining the Counterculture. You'll hear this interview with the guys. You'll be able to watch us to see what we're doing. And lastly, we're available on YouTube. If you've got a YouTube um, uh, app on your phone or if you're uh, in front of the computer, uh, you can also check out this interview. Uh, just search for us in the YouTube search box. Uh, search Witten Radio, and uh, you'll be able to, again, watch this right in the classroom.